Welcome back, everybody. I am very excited today to introduce Microsoft's Executive Vice President of Gaming. Did you Gaming. just point at everybody? I did. Look at that. You, you are a pro. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to try to throw me off, guys, so we're going to have to bear with me here. Of course, I'm joined with no other, uh, none other than himself, Phil Spencer. Welcome up here Sir, on the main stage. Beautiful booth. I love Good this. To have you. Yes, thank you for the booth. <laughs> Why do you keep thanking me for this booth? No, it's because it's amazing. It's, it's amazing to see uh, leadership support mixer and uh, come here in a big way. Uh, we literally have a giant merge symbol careening over the sky here. Uh, we've had amazing partners like Division, Realm Royale, yeah. boys that come on up. Uh, it's been super awesome. But, you know, more importantly, talk to the people at home here. I kind of wanted to sit down with you and have a little chat because it's no, it's no a little secret. little intimate chat in the middle. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. In here. the middle of everybody. <laughs> it's no secret. Big Xbox fan, of course. And uh, you guys had, in my opinion, a stellar briefing on uh, Sunday. You guys came and you punched it hard as uh, you rolled the black, faded up, and then there was that little tease and then Halo Infinite. Yeah. Like how, how powerful, how exciting was it to open the show with that? And it's interesting. We, uh, we had a lot of discussions about how we wanted to open the show. Uh, we had kind of a montage trailer that usually we kind of open to get people excited. Uh, we obviously do the countdown before that. Uh, but working with Bonnie, Ross, and the team, uh, that was the Halo uh, asset they had for the show. And we just thought with the rest of the news that we had about our studios and so many games in the show, uh, to return, the, seeing Master Chief return to the stage, which is a special moment. I'm sitting actually right behind stage when that, that video's running. And I'll tell you, when the helmet showed up, like I think it blew me over. I mean, it was so incredible, the energy yeah. from our fans. Having the fans in the audience is just an amazing thing. But uh, you just feel the love for Master Chief and how important our uh, characters from our history in Xbox are to uh, the community. Nice, nice, yeah. And I have to admit as well, I couldn't tell what it was at first. Like you so guys, you didn't know. You no, I had no idea. Good. You, de you definitely had a little bit of a carrot and a little bit of a a little bit of a tease there. Um, and yeah, they're rolling the trailer now, kind of showing it off. Oh there. yeah, there it is. I mean, it looked familiar. You know, some of the some of the architectural design, maybe yeah. some of the some of the places. And then I remember seeing the Marines, and I was like, I think, are those Marines? They look familiar. Yeah. And then that moment when it pans out. And yeah. You see his helmet. Yeah. I was in so I was in the social war room for Mixer and just screaming. Just screaming. <laughs> That's awesome. I was so excited. It was great. I, obviously a huge fan of Halo. Yeah. It's great to see Chief back in his heyday and of course here with Halo Infinite back. And uh, probably can't talk any details. I'll tell you about the whole game. No, oh, okay. <laughs> well, all right, let's go. Everybody get your notes, get Reddit open. So let's go to town. No, I mean, I think in the history of Halo at E3, uh, there have been some special announced moments for name and the fact that we're kind of starting to be able to use the, the, the name of the game out when we're talking about our future, uh, the future games that are coming. You can think about the monks and kind of past moments. And I thought this was uh, a, a great kind of addition to that. And we'll obviously talk more about the game as 343 and the team, uh, they have a, a great plan for keeping people excited and informed about where we are. Now, we haven't heard any details outside of just the trailer, but I'm kind of curious. It looks like, what kind of, what kind of trouble can we expect Mas Master Chief to get in? Well, you know, one of the things we definitely heard uh, from the last few games, you can go back to like ODST and Reach and Five, uh, that people wanted the story centered around Master Chief, right? They wanted John to be at the center of what they were doing. Uh, it's why we, he is the Spartan you see in the video. Um, and we wanted to make sure that people knew, hey, we heard you, uh, Master Chief is critical to, the, to people's fun with the game and we're gonna focus on that. Also, a little bit of, even then some of the insiders have figured this out, the art style of his helmet. It's a little, right? it's a little, little bit of little throwback. Classic. Yeah. A little classic. And that was purposeful, right? We we're thinking about, okay, let's make sure, uh, it's been a while since we kind of went back to classic MC gameplay, <clears throat> his look, and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a, a fun journey as, as we talk more about it. That's amazing, that's amazing, yeah. And again, everyone, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. I know 343 is working very hard out there in Redmond to make sure they, you know, they, bring, they bring Chief in a big way. Well, and the other thing I would say, because uh, Slipspace was part of the announce, the engine right. investment, and I know that takes a brand time. new engine. Yeah, and love the name of it, by the way. You do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do. The, um, but when you think about a long-term franchise for us, like Halo, and frankly, there were years there, like four, three or four years, where we were doing a Halo game every year. If you think about Anniversary Edition, four, MCC, five, like there was a, a lot of concentration of Halo in a short amount of time. Which, frankly, I think um, going forward, I like. Uh, pacing and scarcity and giving the team time uh, is, a, is a good thing. And 
part of this was we'd really been running on variants of the Halo engine from, from the beginning, uh, and we wanted to give David Berger and the team uh, time to build something that we thought could expand our palette of what we could do with Halo. So it was great. It does take some time, but I think that yeah, in building the long an run, engine the is not important. Easy. No, uh, but I, I, I love the progress that they're making, and I, I think it's going to be a big addition to the franchise. Yeah, absolutely excited here. Speaking of expanding in a big way, Mixer has grown quite significantly here in the last in the last year. We just recently celebrated our anniversary. Yeah, um, a lot of Mixer fans and uh, community are out there. What can we expect for the future of Mixer? Like, what's that? What's the next big step for us? You know, I, and it, it's I should be asking you that. You're the <laughs> team, but the. The thing, well, one, we talked about 20 million uh, viewers on stage. Yeah, for those listening, great. yeah. Yeah, well, everybody was listening. What are you talking <laughs> Some about? people missed it a little bit, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we did. We yep, said we get 20 million, which I, I think is great. Uh, Mixer is one year old. If you think about the... Uh, if you're just going from where we were a year ago, it's like incredible growth, like, like five times growth or something, maybe even more than that. Um, one of the things I've always loved about Mixer, a couple things I think make Mixer unique for us. One is the community and the work that we do to keep it as positive as we can. And I think that's uh, a testament to the team and the sentiment of the team and how they lead and, and our partners and the way they show up. And I think that's a really great thing about Mixer. Now, it's not always perfect in every place, uh, but that's great work for us. Um, the other thing I'd say that we don't talk a ton about, so maybe I'll, 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 I'll go down this path, the number of streamers we have on Mixer, I think, is incredible. Um, obviously, Just they're- the sheer, the sheer breadth of Yeah, them. because it's so easy to stream from a Windows device or, uh, or an Xbox, and it means we get a, a ton of people streaming. Now, some of those might have one or two viewers, but I just think as people are learning to stream, it's a little nerve wracking to kind of put yourself Absolutely. out there. And, uh, and I love the fact that so many people, new streamers, try streaming uh, through Mixer. It's so easy to do. Setup is pretty trivial. Uh, and then, and I, I just think as the community's growing, as people, as we innovate in what is like hype zone and other things, just having more people out there streaming their gameplay uh, gives us great a great base to innovate from. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. Obviously, bias as community manager, but a little bit. It's You're great bit to biased. see. It's great to see the community out there really rally on it. Uh, Xbox engineering side, Mixer engineering side have done a lot of really cool stuff. Putting native streaming built right into the console, and I tell you, the biggest thing that made the biggest impact was one of the, like, for example, you put the USB camera support in there. Yeah. That was huge. That was The community was dying for that. You guys and girls were asking for it. It was great to see uh, that support and uh, be able to snap in, and then recently a partnership with Lightstream. Yeah. So now th that basic console streaming setup can take it a step further, so that way because again, we have that huge breadth of people just trying it out. They're just That's curious. Right. They just want to try, they want to stream it, they want to give it a chance. And the fact that we can now do things like our light stream beta, where people can have uh, they can have scenes, they can have alerts, yeah. they can have custom frames, they can have a be right back, or I'm coming live soon. Um, like a feature list kind of over here, look at you. You're just on a roll. Just <laughs> going, I love it. Now, the, uh, you know, uh, the innovation that we've done around interactivity, seeing the mini golf game, and how many people are going in and playing that, and as we experiment uh, with the community's feedback, back on places that we need to add. I think the USB camera, obviously we have Connect. Connect's kind of an expense, if you're just using it as an RGB camera, yep. kind of an expensive accessory just for that. So uh, having USB support uh, for my uh, for cameras, I think was a, a great addition. And it's we're very committed to Mixer, you know that. Uh, I think it's a great forum for the community to come together. Uh, there's some kind of future things I push on that I'd, I'd love to see come, and I know they're they're in the plan, and uh, it's just going to get bigger, which is fantastic. They definitely are. They definitely are. Speaking yeah. of interactivity, it's actually, I'm glad you pointed that out. Interactivity has been a really core staple of Mixer. Um, being able to work with game developers, work with partners. Do you have any insights on like how many future interactive games we're going to be working on, or you know, uh, as working a, with those partners? And yeah, as, as a platform, what we do, and this is true across Mixer and everything else that we do, uh, you. You do some innovation, you put it in the hands of creators, creators give you feedback, some things work, some things don't work, you get a lot of refinement, and it's kind of this constant iteration. And uh, I would say in kind of uh, core AAA games, I don't think we've really found the hook yet in interactivity that causes everybody to say, oh, I get it. Um, I think co-streaming is one of the things that has caught on because as you get more games where there's multiple players in a team and other settings, uh, that's worked out really well. So on the interactivity side, the mini golf thing is, is kind of small it's as a bit, it is. It's a bit of a surprise. It, yeah, but like, so that's that, that loop that you need to get in with your players and the creative community and us as a platform. And it's great to see the feedback that we get and the usage. Feedback sometimes is, hey, that didn't work. Sometimes is more of that. And it, it's just about staying plugged in 
uh, with studios, staying plugged in with the community about things that they love. Yeah, absolutely. And and out of community feedback and birth, like things like Hype Zone came out, and of course, shout out to High Res Studios for partnering with us for Realm Royale. Yeah, and uh, which looks it great by here. the way. Yeah, it looks absolutely the whole chicken element. I love yeah, by the way the yeah. whole that like, it's like down but not out. Yeah, but then you're chicken and you got to basically run for your life. Yeah, uh, I think they've done it. I mean, High Res, you go back to Smite, you think of Paladins. I mean, they it's a, a studio that I think is done a really good job this generation of of trying some new things and not being afraid to expand what they're doing. So I, I think they're a, they're a good studio. We have a good partnership with that team and it's great to see them uh, having success. Absolutely, and it's great here because people are winning. We're giving them consoles while they're here. Wow! Right? Yeah, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or Nintendo Switch, whatever they want. Whatever they want, look at you, yeah, that's awesome. It's super cool, yeah, to see the diversity and uh, um, just being in, in embracing all the consoles. Yes. It's been super awesome. Um, want to go back to the briefing um, and talk a little bit um, about studios. So I used to work on Microsoft Studios, obviously, with yes, Shannon you did. Loftus. She's an amazing, amazing woman, uh, very smart. And you had some pretty, you had some microphone drops there. And I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you guys announced not only one, two, three, but five new studios. New studios. What can we, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about that partnership. And I kind of would wonder what we can expect from those new partnerships. Well, games. Yeah. I mean, the thing that we want to do. Uh, as Matt Booty and I were looking, Matt Booty running first party, and I were looking at the studios, Shannon's team had partnered with a lot of them, so she was very involved uh, in, in what teams we thought would be a good fit. We started with core creativity. Like, we wanted teams that at their core could create compelling stories, a deep narrative, you know, and I mean, Ninja Theory, I think, is a pinnacle of that when you think about that studio. Also, frankly, studios that we'd had a working relationship with, because like any team, you know, we've got our own quirks and foibles, and as we integrate with other teams, having a lasting relationship that's uh, been proven out over years with these teams is critical. So, you know, you can go to Ninja Theory, we worked with them on the original Xbox, Kung Fu Chaos, Undead, obviously State of Decay 1, State of Decay 2, great success there, Playground with our history with Horizon, and as we started that second team, uh, and we were gonna invest quite a bit more with them in the studio, it made perfect sense. Daryl Gallagher from our time when he was at Crystal. That's right. Right, doing Tomb Raider with them. Um, and Compulsion, which is one I'm really excited about, it was interesting with Guillaume, two years ago, as we were going through all these videos that we get that we might show in E3, and there's always a couple that catch our eye, catch my eye. I mean, Ori was one of them that happened to have the Oh, absolutely, on. yeah. The first time I saw the Ori video of Ori 1, it was like, okay, that's in our show. Like, don't talk to me about it, that game. I don't, uh, that's gonna be in our show. When we saw We Happy Few two years ago, same way, okay, that, who is that team? I love that mood setting that they did and, as well. And so we stayed talking to them as they went through a uh, game preview and they've continued to build out. I've played now basically the full version of the game. Um, new studio and growing, but just their sensibility and the things that they, the topics they want to tackle is incredible. Now, all of these studios, funny enough, are kind of at a different time in their ship cycle. Obviously, Ninja Theory and the team shipped over a year ago when you yeah. think about Hellblade on PS4 and PC. Which is, uh, okay. Compulsion's getting ready to ship. Uh, we've been working on the second team at Playground for a while. So the nice thing from our overall studio pacing is we, it's not like all of these studios announced today, all those things are gonna happen at one time. Right. I actually think some of the things will happen earlier, some of the things as we're starting new teams with like Daryl, Daryl will take a little bit longer. But I think about next E3, I think about other times that we stand up, just the palette of things that we have to choose from and build from is, is uh, much stronger now. And the last thing I'll say, it's not like we're done. Like the, the support we're getting from the company of Microsoft uh, to go be a leader in the games industry uh, we, they understand how important content is. Obviously, they gave us the, the ability to go and add five new studios, uh, and we're not done there. Like we're we're talking to teams all the time because we know that 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 first party capability is just so critical. Absolutely. I, as a fan myself, of course, and staff, I completely agree. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the fact that we have signed these studios, and like you said, one of the things that I was most excited about was, again, each of these studios is in a different stage of development. Yeah. So being able to show that, again, that in, in a sense, that breadth as well of how we'll, we can be expecting as fans and as gamers, you know, a steady flow of content from that first party collection from studios. And I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited to see what each of them can bring up, both currently what they've announced, and then obviously, you know, the secrets, the new, the exciting. Yeah, and you have the existing studios that I thought had a great show, right? When you think about, like you were talking about Halo, Rod coming out at the yeah. end, and talking about three Gears games. I thought Horizon looked incredible. Really the only studio that, that wasn't there was uh, Minecraft. 
um, and not because there's not activity going on Minecraft. We frankly just kind of ran out of time. Yeah. Uh, Crackdown, I thought, showed well. I mean, obviously, we've been giving that game more time. Uh, I, I was really hoping we would, we would get it earlier, but we didn't. And uh, when we started looking at when that game could land, I was playing, I'm playing at home. I've got a dev kit at home and playing quite a bit. And I'm a pretty big It's shaping crackdown. up really well, actually. I got to play a, a couple hours, actually, at the studio the other yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, over in uh, Studio D. And it was great to see um, how far it's come. It looks really great. As a Crackdown fan myself, I'm going to be super pleased with what you guys are bringing. And, and it's well, I mean, it, out, yeah. It's a good story. Because, I mean, there was somebody in the spring asked me, hey, is Crackdown in trouble? What's going on? I said, no, we've got a date. Uh, as I started playing more, and I don't know if there's anybody that's a bigger Crackdown fan than I am, there were certain things I wanted to see us work on in the game that was going to extend past the date that we we currently had set. So I sat down with Shannon and the team and said, OK, where can we get this to in terms of the feel of the agent and things I think were really important. And all of a sudden, you're starting to look at the fall for that kind of game. And then, you, man, the fall is just such a lineup of games with Red Dead and COD and, oh, yeah. and Battlefield and Assassins and just laws. It's like, OK, I want this game to be successful as well. So let's give the team time to make the game right. And let's put it out at a time where it's actually going to get some sunshine. I mean, now, the date we picked, I just saw it like, coming through three. I think there's like 20 games shipping on that same day. So, like, you know, I think maybe we'll, we'll work with some partners to figure Absolutely. out the exact day in there. But uh, I like the fact that we gave the, uh, a franchise that's important to us as Xbox fans more time yep. uh, to build the best game we can. Nice. We're talking about a lot of games here. Uh, one of my fan favorites here, Xbox Game Pass. Yeah. We talked a little bit about in the briefing I saw. There was a little nod to that. Um, a little nod. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Shut laughs> I'm setting the stage. Yeah, a, little, <laughs> a little nod, and then you can blow him away, Phil. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was great to see uh, Game Pass get the mention out. Um, there's a lot of fans have been a huge, you know, some people are nervous about the subscription model, about the games, but then um, from what I'm understanding and what I'm hearing, um, it's giving it's giving new sight to these games that otherwise people might have missed. Or they, I'm noticing people seeing the games, maybe, you know, oh, you know, I heard about that game. Let me go ahead and check yeah, it out. And yeah. because they have Game Pass, they can dip right in. So maybe share a little bit about the Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, it's all about choice, Absolutely. right? And giving gamers choice about how they want to play. Uh, we've been in the market a year now with Game Pass, had tremendous growth, which has been awesome to see. Um, gamers inside of Game Pass are playing more games, which I think is what it's all about. They're finding new games that they missed when they were at retail. Um, now they can click. Ashley got to stand on stage. It was awesome seeing our lead engineer for Game Pass. Right. They talk about fast start, so we're making it faster to try new games. Um, and you're getting uh, players inside of Game Pass playing more games. The other thing they're actually doing is buying more games. And maybe that seems counterintuitive, uh, but as you just find people have more things to do on, on, on Xbox, and they're playing more games in Game Pass, they're, they're just, their activity's higher, they're spending more time with friends, they're buying more games. So people that are worried that, that somehow like subscription's gonna go swallow the world, we are so committed to people building games and selling those games on our platform. We're like games like Fortnite, which people don't buy up front, but tend to spend money in the games. I think it's healthy for us if all of these business models work. And there shouldn't be one formula for a great game. There shouldn't be one formula for the business model Agreed. around a great game. And I think the fact that Game Pass lives in there is, uh, is really important. Having Todd Howard come on stage and talk about Fallout 4, Seeing the support from uh, Ubisoft with the division going in, Elder Scrolls. I think we announced like. Four I think that's my favorite part. Is your so we have our own titles and our own initiatives, yeah. and you have some of the historical ones. But I love the I love the adaptation and the join in from the third party studios. Like again, Todd Howard coming up there say, "Yeah, no, this is great. This is not. This isn't like oh, this is this isn't a, a game gate." a game graveyard. This is actually a great way to innovate and share mm -hmm. those new uh, game titles and existing game titles. And of course, first party IPs. That's yeah. super exciting. I love that. Yeah, and us shipping our games on launch day in has turned out to be a really great thing for our franchises. Um, and then, you know, even if you're looking at Todd, who took a little shot at me on stage, and that guy, I told him, be careful, I'm on stage last. <laughs> so Todd's a really good friend of mine. Well, He's next great time around. on stage. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they're getting ready to launch Fallout 76, and it's a great opportunity for them for people who maybe stopped playing Fallout 4 or didn't play it when Fallout 4 was a huge success that it was, but they can put this game into Game Pass and all of a sudden people who maybe didn't play Fallout before kind of had lost touch with it 
can easily get back into the franchise before Fallout 76 comes along. You saw that with the division yep. as well. I think all that stuff's really, really healthy for our industry. And obviously, there's a business relationship, so you know they're making money. Yep. That happens. You know, studios making money on the games that they build is yep. pretty critical to more games coming. Yeah, um, and I love you know because a lot of these games obviously have storylines, they have great mechanics, and yeah. being able to jump into the one, the two, the three, or the four, like yeah. Fallout 4, and then being able to have that introduction, then roll right into something like Fallout 76 is great. Do you have any personal favorite titles coming coming up on Xbox Game Pass? Oh, in Game Pass. Yeah. Well. Game Pass is hard. Have you hard. finally stopped playing Assassin's Creed Origins is what I'm asking you. <laughs> you know, the game I can't stop playing now <laughs> is State of Decay 2. If people watch me online, like I'm constantly playing State of Decay 2. And you 2. leave your party open, let people join yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, uh, yeah. I just love that game. But the, uh, uh, I won't kind of hype that game. But um, I'll say, I can't talk a lot about the stuff that's coming into Game Pass that we didn't announce, like of the games that we did announce. Um, I didn't finish Fallout 4, to be honest, so going back and, and finishing Fallout 4, I think it'll be cool. All those games, you know, the Xbox One X enhanced work that they've done, so I think that'll be fun. Uh, but really, for me, the announce that MCC is coming. Because uh, MCC, the team has done such good work. We took the feedback around the launch. Uh, MCC didn't hit the quality, Master Chief Collection, didn't hit the quality that we wanted at launch. 343 has continued to work on that, continue to make refinements. Uh, actually got to stand on stage and say MCC is coming into Game Pass. And I just think, given that it's such a huge collection of Halo franchise, uh, the Halo games, coming into Game Pass is such a, a, a perfect mix. Uh, I think that's going to be a special moment when that nice. hits. Now, during the briefing, yeah. you very briefly talked a little bit about the team at Xbox working on the future consoles, future of Xbox. I was, like, I was like, I don't know how to like put it in words like the future. Is there anything you, uh, future tech even, it's, it felt like a, you know, a nod to that. Kind of, I'd love to just kind of marinate in that for a second about kind of. Marinate in it. Kind of what that, I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. You're marinating. You, you gave a little tease and so I'd love to. It actually wasn't about. trying to be a tease. Here, and I'll be really explicit about yeah. what it was. Um, we, a couple years ago, we made the decision to ship our first party games on Xbox and PC. Uh, I get a lot of feedback about that on whether that's a good thing for the Xbox console sales. Yeah. Are we really committed to console? Or are we just trying to get out of console and go and become what people call a third party publisher? Then I'm standing on stage and I'm talking about streaming and I'm showing an Xbox boot animation on a phone and I can just feel like, the, hey, what's going on? I want to make sure the brand for me as a gamer sitting in the audience watching at home, the brand I love is about what I love to do, which is sit on a couch and play a, cons a great console games on my television, we are working on the next console. And I wasn't really trying to tease people. What I was trying to say is don't think that because we're trying to reach every gamer on the planet that we don't want to have the world's best console. Now I kind of easily shift into the PR line of Xbox X, world's most powerful console. But X was a sign of our commitment to saying we're going to build the most powerful console in the world and frankly doing it. Yep. And the success it's had with third parties, I mean, it's so many games just look better on that box, and it should, because it, it has better silicon inside. It's not like you know there's any secret magic there. Right. But yeah. Going forward, I wanted the, the community to know I am extremely committed to console gaming. We are already working on the next console, and what that means, because building a console is incredibly expensive, we've it, got, I've got approval all the way up take, to yeah, go do it. Develop. And so it wasn't trying to be a tease. It was trying to say, I want people to know that for those of you, the only place you want to play is your console games on your television at the highest fidelity, best place to play. I'm committed to that experience. Frankly, it's where I play most of my games. So that's what it was all about. I just wanted a complete story, even in little snippets on stage. All right, I like that. I love that. I love the idea that it sounds like a quality thing. Like you, you know, we saw the we saw the phone, PC. Uh, I know we have the console, of course. Uh, it sounds like we really wanted to iterate on the quality um, of bringing in games and letting people know, like, no, there's still a console quality here. Well, I mean, I think there's some of my my people, my business team will tell me you can't talk about stuff in the future because people won't do what you want them to do now, which is buy a console. But I'm just, I found out with announcing Project Scorpio when we did, um, being open with the community, as open as I can be, I mean, uh, around stuff that we're doing, I think just shows our commitment to our, our fans that we're gonna give them insight into where we're going. Uh, uh, you know, we're not shipping a new console this year. It's not like people should feel bad about anything they buy this year. Um, but you know, from a pure business standpoint, somebody could say, oh, don't talk about Next, even though everybody knows Next is being worked on. Uh, because you might slow down current sales. Like, 
I'm not playing that game. Well, I love the idea. I love you know the, the, the tech there is, is what it's, it's being built around. The idea that play your Xbox games anywhere. Um, I don't think we've talked about it, about what kind of games we can expect to see kind of in that, in that tech universe where we want to expand past the console. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I think what I sense is I, I've grown up in an industry that builds highly immersive deep games. And I see those games, I want those games to be playable by anyone. Because I think the stories and the characters and frankly some of the questions that we ask in gaming today um, are relevant kind of social commentary. Like, I think it's important that people play these great games and feel them. And, uh, and right now that's locked to people who own a television who can afford to go buy a console. And when you look at the planet, you know, there's just certain people that they're never gonna have a device that's capable of playing those games. Uh, so we're working on the technology in order to enable those games to reach a player wherever they are. Is it going to supersede uh, the great experience you have on your television? No. Like, you know, it's... That still sounds like it's going to be a main drive for Xbox. But Absolutely. But there's also this other giant open space um, of basically how do we make games more accessible for this whole other tire community that's just sitting here. Which excited. in the end brings more games. Because as creators create games that reach an audience that they can't reach today, means that the business actually gets bigger and you can see more games get created, which I, I think as gamers is what we should look for. I love the diversity in games that we see today, um, but still specifically in the console space, there's a couple hundred million people that can play those games and there's two billion gamers on the planet. Now, I'm not saying two billion people are gonna wanna go play Halo or gonna wanna play, go, play Gears, but as creators, you wanna give them the largest audience they can possibly get. So, and I don't think that means everything turns into a vanilla game that is that two billion people want. I actually just think you find the people that love all kinds of games because you're just reaching a larger audience. In terms of the you know the console stuff itself, I love what we did with X. Uh, we focused on hitting 4K. I think we did that. Uh, yeah, last year you talked about four, Xbox One X obviously launching. Yeah. You talked about v, you even you even touched on VR last year. Yeah. You talked about you know making 4K gaming more of a standardization. Like what is next for Xbox? Well, you know one of the things we we think a lot about is frame rate. Yep. You know I think frame rate's one of those things as gamers. It's a little bit you know the marketing of 4K TV, 4K other things is a little bit easier. But we see the the work that we've done with frame rate, like seeing Forza Horizon 4 give uh, a 60 hertz X, uh, yes. frame frame second option. Yeah. Uh, we see what we've done with Halo. So it's one of those areas. There's some other things about kind of ray tracing and some other kind of future things that we're working on uh, with our platform team. I think it's going to be ex exciting uh, in where this space goes. Uh, but it's definitely going to be about the best feeling in your hands when you're playing that control. The controller just melts away and my I feel like I'm controlling the character on screen seamlessly, have the best visuals, have the best audio. Uh, that's our focus. Nice, nice, and I'm excited for the future as well. It's going to be super, super great. And then towards uh, towards the you touched on it briefly, but as a, probably my favorite first party IP that you guys have, we have Gears. So it was great to see that kind of breadth announcement you mentioned. Rod had gone up there and talked about. So did you know what things. we were going to show there? Uh, I knew Gears. So I got briefed the night before. Oh, okay. but I got vague briefed. Uh, <laughs> I would call it. Uh, um, but basically they said Gears has a segment and there'll be three beats. Yeah. Make sure you pay attention to the first, second, but really the third. It's uh, pay some, attention. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people in the room were very aware, like I literally have a Lancer mounted like in my yeah, office. Yeah. So they're very hyper aware of my excitement and I, when I saw Rod and the team and Rose and them, I got super excited. I mean, that had to be great to share, like here's some, here's some diversification with the brand we want to think about outside of console gaming and then just punch that Halo 5 right, or Gears 5 right through the end. Yeah, yeah, you know, the pop thing, we, we had all three of those, Tactics, Gears 5, and Pop, and we'd actually move them around in different orders um, to try to make sure, because we wanted Gears 5 to obviously be the crescendo, like that is the ending, that's, because uh, it is the heart and soul of what the franchise is. The Tactics thing I've been really excited about for a long time, and every once in a while somebody would ask me at a thing, at, at some, at, at talking to the community, it, could Gears ever go to another genre, and I knew we were working on this, and I, I would say yes, and then Rod would throw a rock at me. Um, but it was so great to be able to see. I mean, I'm a big XCOM fan. Oh, yeah. And so you see uh, tactics. Yeah, yeah. And, just yeah. super adorable. Oh, Never thought I'd say the word gears and adorable. Yeah, no, that's in the, yeah, the pop thing, uh, I thought it was a nice opening. It was kind of a little bit of a, uh, a humorous uh, take on the, the Gears franchise. Uh, but no, I mean, the, the Coalition team loves Gears of War, and they 
they want that Gears universe, the Gears stories, Gears characters to go in different places and reach different uh, gamers. And that's the team that Rod's built. And you, you see that commitment in the way they show up on stage. What was your favorite game in our briefing? Got to be the end. So I mean, I'm Gear, so Gears 5, Halo. The end is in Cyberpunk? or the Gears? Halo Infinite and then your little IRL hack you had at the end. <laughs> and I love that because I feel like you were like, what's going on? And I know it was scripted, obviously, you know, you knew it was coming, but... What do you mean scripted? I don't know what you're I talking no about. I had no idea what was coming. I don't know what you're talking about. It was great. such a bad actor. I like, okay, this is going to happen. Just try to keep talking. I'm like... Just horrible. act natural. Like, yeah. No, you okay. did great. No, you yeah. did great. No, it was horrible. You did great. Horrible. No, no. Academy Award for film. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. It was, it was super... It was a blast to see that... Um, Witcher 3, and I mean, CD Projekt Red. Uh, I can tell you as a fan, I nothing to do with here or at E3, but I loved the, I loved their DLC strategy. Yeah, uh, they were like, you bought our game, let us support you now as a community, and yeah. give you like 60 pieces of DLC yeah. for free. Um, Cyberpunk, man. Uh, so I'm a huge, huge fan of sci-fi space. Yeah, uh, I have love, you seen the demo they're doing here? I have. I've been up here all day. Uh, all day, working but hard. Working the whole hard. Fifth Element yeah. meets. Witcher, we, and I'm, in, I'm injecting my own interpretation. I see but, that. <laughs> but I love that feeling and that vibe. Like, how exciting is that for CD Projekt to reveal that in a super creative way and then also sh show since like 2013, oh. I want to say, uh, that, that game. You know, I, I've been on the road a lot in the last few years because I, I thought there was work for us to do to rebuild some of the developer relationships and coming from studios. Like, going to a development studio is kind of like, I'm a pig in mud. Like, that's just what I love. <laughs> and it's funny, because I go there, and they usually just hand me the controller, and we just sit there and play. Yeah. Um, I was in Warsaw in uh, January, which is a cold place in January. And they were, we were talking about E3 and what they wanted to do. And uh, they, they had this idea of closing the show and wanting me out there. And they had the whole thing. Like, they said, oh, they pitched that whole thing. Oh, they, the whole thing. They said, we want to hack it. We could do it at the beginning, but we think it would be better at the end. And uh, then we started playing the game a little bit. I saw them last night. They were very happy with the, the way they came out. You know, the, but it's, you got to spend time with the studios. It's something that's important to me. Like, I love all the Japanese publisher support we had on our stage. I was going to say, yeah, shout out to Devil May Cry up there. Well, we had the Kingdom Hearts. Up yeah, there. I was talking to Square, the leadership there. We had five Square games on our stage, which was incredible. We got in the Capcom, I saw them. Like, that Devil Japanese expansion is amazing. It's uh, the best one was Tales of Vesperia, if anybody's worried. Like, that is the, I, that asset, like, was not going anywhere. That video, I, people, Certain people who haven't been around Xbox for as long as I have, like, why this Tales of Asperia? Like, you don't get it, but this is going to be that in near. Like, I said, yeah. okay. And uh, when I was giving Square, I said you had five games. I gave them four and a half because I said near, I kind of give a half game. <laughs> Got to give you half. <laughs> but it was awesome to be able to get that game uh, on, on our stage, Xbox One and had, uh, enhanced and finally come into Xbox. But anyway, like, uh, going to visit the studios, talking to them about what we're doing, getting to... Jump Force, Namco Bandai's brand new IP that they they showed on our stage. Uh, that was, just got to do like, the work. What a heck of a trailer too. That was that was an adrenaline filled one. I loved that. It was, I, and I mean this like all respect to the video. I played that um, in, in Japan, and I think it actually looks better and plays better than that video show. And I thought the video was great, uh, but I'm incredibly impressed by that team. I've been spending more time with them and creatively and talking to them about where these games go. But it's it's just so great to see the community. I mean, even talking to Capcom again last night and uh, you know what the success they've had with Monster Hunter, obviously with us, with DMC. I thought Resident Evil on Sony's looked awesome, like two. They have an amazing booth over oh, there, too. Full I told them it was too scary. Of the Raccoon City, City Police scary. Station. But so many publishers are doing well right now. And uh, the industry is just really booming, and I want us to be the best platform we can for gamers and for developers, so the best games show up um, on Xbox. Speaking of gamers here, fans, I'm personally one of my favorite things about E3 you do here is the fan fest. Yeah. Uh, Chris Munson works very hard to make that thing happen. Um, I think you got to see them a little bit and, and rally on that. Kind of, what was that experience like? I mean, now that we're, was it year three, year four, of the fan fest? I think it's year three. Yeah. Um, I go visit. I think you know this. I go talk to the fan fest yep. people before. Uh, the show and I let them know how critical they are to what we do every day but also the show itself right they inject such an energy I remember the days when you would come out and it was a bunch of press people blogging or tweeting and uh, about the show and it games are entertainment yeah I mean the press is doing their job Absolutely. I'm not criticizing them but having 
the community there feeling they have no problem telling me what they like and what they don't like. They definitely very don't have any. <laughs> uh, But the Xbox community, not just the people who got to came, come to Fan Fest, uh, but the global community, it so drives, definitely drives me. Um, and I try to engage with the community as much as I can. I try to be open when I'm out playing on Xbox Live, the games. Uh, I don't hide. You can see how bad I am at certain games and what games I play too much. Uh, and to, I want to be, be Red there. Dead. <laughs> I did be Red Dead. Finally. Did you? Yeah. I finally oh my did. gosh! Thank goodness. Yeah, I finally did. <laughs> uh, I got to do it before Red Dead. Sam would kill me if I hadn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red Dead too. Um, but it's uh, you know that that is the heart and soul of what we do. And you know this, like when you walk around our halls, so many of us are just kind of corny Xbox fans and and gamers, uh, which sounds like PR, but it is it is just true when you're there inside the the organization that. So many people, they're playing games everywhere. They're playing games on all platforms. They let us know what they want more of. Look at Roby over there shaking his head at me. He's probably um, is. He probably is. The, uh, but it's, they are the heart and soul of what we do. And the fact, gamers outreach, we're able to take the money that people use. That was amazing, by the way. Yeah, it was Zach awesome. Weigel and that organization. Sure, yeah. I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, well, Greenberg's on their board now. Yep. I mean, it's uh, gaming can have such a positive impact on people's lives. Things like gamers outreach, the adaptive controller, all these things that the community is such a part of us building uh, are just you know great great signs of what I think is the world's only true interactive art form something that brings people together now I get all soft on my love of gaming um, and I think we have a real uh, capability with gaming to bring people together in a world that maybe has too many things that are dividing us I agree and I, and I know you say you get sappy on it but I still always go back to that time that time old, like playing games is fun, playing piece of entertainment is great, but one thing that you guys have always done differently and I've always respected is back in the day when you guys were over in a millennium um, and you were putting, you were built, you know, building that box and you were like, let's put an ethernet cord in yeah. there. Let's put Xbox Live in there. They're like, you're crazy. What is this? You don't put ethernet cord in the back of a console. And uh, I think what you did is a little less more about putting the technology in there or something called Xbox Live. I think what you did is you put an enabling feature to connect the community and I think that's resonated throughout the years and it's just rippled as Xbox Live has grown, how community has grown, into forums, into Reddit, into yeah. social, into Twitter. I mean, I'm out there all the time as a community yes, manager, you are. listening, yeah. talking, yeah. Um, and it's great to see the openness. You don't get that everywhere you go. And I think it's really nice to see that little nod there. And I'm, I think it's, in my opinion, biased, but it's built into the DNA. Um, and you can't rip that out, you can't fake that, you can't take that out. It's right there from the core of the beginning. So. No. I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you for you know from as a, as a fan myself. Thank you. You know, oh, making sure that is consistent. Making sure your leadership, your engineers, um, your board is all making sure they're firing uh, on all cylinders when it comes to that. It is the work that the team does. You know, I I sometimes feel like when I come out on stage and there's Phil, Phil, Phil like, I, I feel like I'm some figurehead guy standing on stage reading a teleprompter, um, and the teams do such amazing work to make all of this possible. Uh, and I, I totally agree with you. It is it kind of the soul of what we do. So, I mean, we do everything perfectly, no doubt about that. But the why behind what we try to do, I do fundamentally believe in. Even if sometimes see, people might question that, the team works from the right reasons. I believe that. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us here. But we do have a little thing we call trivia. Uh-oh. So, we, so we, we've got the interactive element here, of course, on Mixer. So we're going to actually let the folks at home interact and try some trivia here with us. Okay. So, now it's time, basically we talked about a mixer interactivity, so now we're gonna do some mixer interactivity. So we've been talking about giveaways as well. We've got Xbox Live codes we're gonna be dropping for some winners. So, warm up your controllers, because trivia time begins now. And I'll let you read the first question. You want me to read it here or there? That's right there. What day did the Xbox 360 launch in North America? December 10th, 2005, March 23rd, 2006, November 22nd, 2005, December 2nd, 2005. Don't read that last line. <laughs> Correct answer is... Oh. Uh, <laughs> so we give, give you guys a couple seconds here. You got about four more seconds are. here to see A, B, C, or D. Which answer is correct? Your time is up. The mixer machine is going to tally up those answers. Okay. See who's got it right. And let's see. We'll actually get a percentage here about how many people are paying attention and know their history. 63%. Not too got bad. It right. Not too bad. I got it right. Three percent. You guys got Phil on stage. You got to impress him here. So yeah, we, good job. November twenty second, two thousand five. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, no. Exciting day, of course. We're gonna get you to the next question. We're gonna warm up that question machine, and uh, I'm gonna let you read it. <laughs> what is it? It's like flashback. Which game was not an OG Xbox launch title? Halo Combat Evolved, Dead or Alive Three, Project Gotham Racing, Jet Set Radio Future. Hmm. 
Which one? Which one? A, B, C, or D? I actually didn't know this one. You didn't? No, I didn't. It's because you weren't even born yet. Uh, <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Young Sprout. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, the correct answer was Jet Set Radio Future. Only 33%, though. Oh, Almost what else they bet? Dead or Alive 3, they got fooled by that one. 37% oh, on Dead or Alive 3. DOA 3. Yeah, a little bit of a nod there. I was born by then. I love Jet Set. <laughs> I think Jet Set should come to OG back to back. Oh. I think it should. It's one of my, like, I go talk to Sega guys all the time. Nice. Fine. New question here. I'm going to go with this one. One of Mixer's defining features is its low latency. FTL streaming. What does FTL stand for? Is it faster than light? For the light. Feel the love or for the, for the lols? <laughs> Trick question. Your time is up. You guys better get this right. You're on Mixer right now. <laughs> for the lols. For the lols. We should change that. Marketing, Jen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is correct. 81% got that one right. Easy, yeah, easy softball. That was a tough one. Faster than lights, our low latency technology. Shameless little plug. Look at it's you. great. Uh, instant conversations with chat, just like this. It's super awesome. It changes the game. It changes it from you just putting on a show and then watching people react yeah. later to like that instant gratification, almost like an achievement unlock. You better friends. go to the next one. They're, gonna... They're loading the next question. Oh, yeah. I see how we're Got to give up the warm up machine. I All like right. this one. This is you. Oh, okay. The Xbox 360 did not have which feature at launch? What kind of question is, did not have which feature? Fire, wireless controllers, an HDMI port, a DVD player, a removable hard drive. I remember this. That's right. Time Time's up, up already. Yeah. The correct answer is, of course, an HDMI, HDMI port. 46%. Yeah. Looks like everybody, most yeah. the majority ruled, so. That was old RGB days. Yeah, back or in the day. Or composite. Yep, I remember traveling, going to hotels and slapping those in when yeah. I was traveling so I could still play. Uh, I'll go ahead with the next one here. We'll give it a load. There it is. Which of these was not an official Xbox 360 bundle? The Arcade, the Elite, the Pro, or the Grand? A, B, C, or D? Can I vote? Huh? Can I vote? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I you love know. this. It's like, tr it's like uh, the flashback time. Isn't right, it? right. Grand. That's right. The, the correct answer was D. Grand. And then actually we're going to get a winner. Oh, I think yep. oh, so there's the tally. 77%. They're destroying these questions. You Lots of people. A lot of 360 fans. Oh, we want them to win prizes. A little soft. We gave away a 55-inch 4K TV. And Baron Grodd won with 89 points total. Good job, Baron Grodd. Speed answer, uh, speed counts. Make sure your accuracy counts. And again, we'll be doing trivia all show long today and all show long tomorrow. And we've got prizes. Yesterday, we gave away a Samsung 55-inch uh, 4K TV, thanks to Samsung. Uh, we've been giving away codes. You guys codes. are rolling over here. Yeah, we've been giving away full game codes. You should give away that McLaren. OK. <laughs> Where's the keys, Dad? McLaren. Can I have the keys, Dad? <laughs> I'll take it for a little It's a beautiful bit. car. Yeah, let's go get in and out. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to let me do that. Oh, uh, no. Uh, it's great to have you up here. It's awesome. Uh, excited for the future of Xbox. I love the games that you guys showed, um, the, the openness to the community, supporting things like crossplay with Fortnite. That's amazing to see that. Um, let's see. Mom's the word on <laughs> it. <laughs> Nuts, don't try to bait me on that one. <laughs> I'm not baiting. I'm not baiting. I think Take you're over. baiting me a little bit. No, no, I'm excited to see it. So, in Fortnite's over there, they got a huge battle bus. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it's super great. Tremendous oh. success for Epic. It's great to see. Absolutely, yeah. Love the team over there. So I'm going to let you. You're a very busy man, so I know, and I've kept you up here longer than I probably should. Producer no, it's been fun. My ear. Oh, are they okay? So that's okay. No, we got to get Roby out here. That's why. We do. We the do. big star's coming. There we go. Yeah, he's getting ready to roll up here. <laughs> uh, I'll probably see you again in the elevator back home for another cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, that's when I always run into you. So thanks for joining Thank us. Thanks, sir. It's been awesome. All right, guys. This is it for this time. But... We've got uh, some more coming at you live. We're going to check out and see what's happening live on the floor.